Hello, and welcome to another Mr. Peter Byte video. And this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at a Panasonic VHS machine. Um, it's a G18, and um, it's dual speed, long play, short play. Um, and uh, only basic, really, no uh, hi fi or anything like that. Uh, but it does use a K deck, which is one of the main reasons I like these. And it is one of the last um, machines from Panasonic that actually used the K deck before the infamous G deck took over the uh, clunky, clunky, snappy, snappy deck. <laughs> it's sort of quite like to break gears and as such. So, uh, this is actually a pretty tidy machine. Um, I mean, you see it's, it's seen life, and, uh, but it will clean up really nicely. The, the cabinet is really nice on it. I seem to have a silver remote for it, and uh, not quite sure how that happened, but it's a very tidy remote, so I don't mind too much. Um, and I also have some spares. Um, I do have a pinch roll as well. I need to get that out. Um, but I bought this from Domberg, brand new, old stock. And you can see the glue's actually failed in it in the packet, uh, which is not ideal. But I did also buy this, and this is a direct, uh, more up-to-date, um, replacement for this, uh, which uses plastic in a completely different way of uh, gluing the, um, the felt pad. Uh, also a brand new, genuine idler. Brand new old stock. It's all old stock, isn't it? And um, so, VXP0521. Uh, VXZ zero one six five for the um, for the back tension band. Uh, obviously, I won't be using that one. I probably will repair it to be honest because it's it's obviously brand new. It just needs regluing. Um, not terribly sure what the best glue is for that. Um, I'm thinking possibly just lightly using um, super glue gel. But uh, I don't know, will that be flexible enough? But I'll have a think on that and do put something in the comments if, if you've had experience of using glue and uh, that does actually do what it's uh, supposed to do for these. So uh, I suppose the next thing is, is to test. So the trusty Sony standing by. So, oh, that's not a good start. Hmm, wonder what's going on there. Hmm, could be maybe the front lid of the cassette isn't going up, probably it could be the cassette to be honest. So, uh, fast forward. Yeah. Rewind. Non-existent. Play. Oh well, yeah, it is playing. Struggling a bit with with that uh, dodgy idler uh, picture. Hmm. Not ideal, is it? which is actually working fairly well. Um, that's looking very much like something in the tape path. Uh, at the left hand side. Yeah. Okay, let's stop that. I think that's just left 
loop, loop of tape. Yeah. So Idler is obviously not happy. So uh, yeah, let's lift the top. So the lid's off, and here it is in all its glory, and it <laughs> needs a jolly good clean. Um, it's it's really very mucky. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's just get this shielding screen off, nice and easy on these. And have a look at it in all its glory. And yeah, it's it's pretty dirty. So let's press play and see what's going on. Oh, uh, yeah. Not great. <laughs> So, yeah, that idler's given up the ghost, I think, pretty much. So, yeah, I mean, it's really very, very bad. That idler, it's completely dried out and it's cracked. Um, heads wise, it does actually look as if there's been a mouldy tape put through here at some point, although, I don't know, uh, it's just very mucky. So it's going to need a jolly good clean, a really, really good clean out. Um, and uh, I would say this was probably in an old house. Um, because it's, it's just the type of dust and insects and bits and pieces that are in here. Uh, it's just very indicative of being in a in an old house. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is back tension, and the felt has long since gone. <laughs> Uh, probably we'll find that on our travels as we take it apart. Um, and I wonder on these as well whether they use the large supercapacitors, the memory caps. Maybe they don't. Um, another thing with these to watch out for, because the boards are sort of, if you like, upside down, everything's hanging down. They can get dry joints on the some of the components that run warm. Um, things like, I seem to remember, capstan, um, motor chip is a prime one for getting dry jointed. We'll check all of that. Um, let's not get too carried away. Um, power supply looks messy. But it's fine. Uh, can't see any obvious signs of leakage from any caps. They do tend to be pretty solid, these. Um, and obviously this deck is brilliant. Uh, it's, it's one of the best VHS decks, I think, in my humble opinion. Um, it's just a shame that they didn't really, as far as I know, they didn't do a um, short play, long play. Uh, Hi-fi stereo machine with using this deck. It just never happened uh, Which is a real shame, but uh, Yeah, so I suppose the next thing is is to change everything um, Somewhere I've got some belts as well, so uh, we'll do that as well and uh, Yeah, so let's crack on I've given it a bit of a clean and just while it tries to wreck some more tape, <laughs> I'll just pause it. Um, now obviously, I mean, I've got this and you could argue it's the heads, but of course we do know we've got no back tension. 
So uh, let's see if we can encourage it to behave. Uh, maybe. Nah, let, let's stop it. Um, before it starts wrapping too much tape around. Anything? So let's uh, let's see if we can get a bit of enough torque to actually play a tape. Mm, so far, so good. So let's use my finger just to build up some torque. You can see there, we actually do have good heads and a good picture. I mean, obviously, you've got flicker because. It's not working. Oh, my finger's not doing a very good job there. Flicker because of the camera against the TV. Um, but we are good. So we can go ahead and do a service. Um, front loading system, I gave it a grease and ran that grease in by pushing the tape in several times and ejecting and just continually doing it and it is now fine. It, it was it was lifting the lid, it was just literally the, the I think it was either this here that wasn't properly moving um, or is, there also seemed to be a bit, a bit of a problem with this catch here, this is a locking catch, so if this is pushed, it won't go in. It just goes skew if like that. Um, but I don't know. I don't know exactly what it was, but it's working fine now, and it doesn't clatter like it was when it <laughs> would occasionally work uh, before. So that's good. Um, so I suppose the next thing is to take it apart. So, let's strip it down and uh, give it a service. So, there we have it. Um, two belts. Uh, it's fairly standard, really, to the K deck. Um, interesting um, capstan motor uh, use there. That's quite fun. So um, I don't actually have a belt kit for this, but um, I'm sure I have belts. So uh, I'll dig those out now. Okay, so I've changed the belt. Um, this is actually from a um, the shape of V5480 belt kit. I've got loads of them, so don't mind robbing a, a belt. Um, this is the old belt. It's a bit stretched, but it, it was still working okay, but it's, it's gone dry, so uh, definitely needed doing. The belt I've replaced it with is a tiny bit thicker, but that, that's fine. Um, it's given good um, torque, and uh, it's not too too tight at all to be honest it's actually very good so uh, yeah so the next thing is to get this belt out and it should just be a matter of taking these two screws off and removing the arm and See this belt sort of smoked a bit. So yeah, so next thing is to see if I can find one of those. So both belts changed. So the next thing now is to take the front off, 
take the front loading system out so we can get to that uh, idler. So the front's off and I've given it a bit of a clean. Uh, I was also very careful. I did remember not to use the server sole um, on the metalized buttons because it will take the print straight off. Um, so I've just put some on a cloth and just rubbed the plastics, or cleaned the plastics with it. And um, yeah, you can see it's done a pretty good job. Um, does need a final finish just to clean it up and take some of the finer scratches out, but it, it's clean and uh, it's also clean, relatively clean inside as well. Shined up the uh, inside of the window, which was absolutely filthy, really dirty, uh, as they do. So let's get off the front loading system. Um, so screw down here. Uh, screw down there, that red screw there. And we should, I think, I don't think we need to lift the board, but maybe we do. I think that's all you need to take out. I can't see any other screws because the the case screws hold the, uh, the front case screws hold the, um, that down there. This is becoming free. I've just got to be a bit careful because there is a ribbon cable and I'm just wondering if they've made it so you can do it without having to lift the whole board out. Um, yeah. I think you have to lift the board out. So I can't see any way how that can come out or past. I was hoping there was some crafty way you could slide it, but so um basically all the red screws, keep them all together. Obviously I'm videoing this so I've got a good uh, reference for when I put it back together which screw goes where, although it's, I suppose it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, I guess it folds up from the... Uh, I don't know. Folds up from the centre of the deck to the edge, which means I'm going to have to take off the clock PCB. Uh, it's very much like the, oh, what was it, 6.30? Uh, I did not so long ago. That'll sort of un unfold and allow me to spin up the... Um, It's going to miss one, haven't you? And let's talk about the video leads connected, the audio AV leads. Now, what I'm wondering, does that have to come out as well? Or is there? Yeah. I, mm. Or does 
Yeah, I think I have to take these out as well. Two black screws on the back. Which I think fairly difficult to do. I was doing that, <laughs> doing that through the camera. That one. I think the whole lot should lift up then, possibly. Um, And probably have to unplug this. Like so. And it's funny how much I do actually have to strip this down. So there you go, that's lifted it up. Now, obviously, I've got other leads. Well, yeah, I say that I've really only got this here, the strap. So let's just undo that. I think we'll be all right. Here's all the red screws. So that's just a that's not a self-tapping type. Oh, and actually, I didn't have to take the front off. That's actually worth knowing. The, um, I mean, there is that hinge there, which suggests, yeah, really, it should be attached. But uh, the cables are long enough, so that's great. That's actually really worth knowing. Um, so there's a backup uh, cap, which actually looks okay, I think. Maybe. We'll see. I'll check that. And, uh, yeah, so, let's hold that out of the way. It's a bit grubby, isn't it? No, that's not the one. That's the deck, isn't it? It is that one. That's what we want. It's getting a bit carried away there. And there we go. That's lifted out. Right, so the idler first, um, making a note of where that spring goes there. Just move it out of the way, which is, I was going to say that's relatively straightforward to do, but <laughs> you, you wouldn't really know it, would you? And then this is on a split clip. which I can't see the split for. There we go. Still haven't found the split for it, but I've lifted it off. There's the split. Yeah. So lift that off. Hold one off. You can see just how bad this has got. It's just really so dried out and cracked and horrible. It's amazing it was working at all, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, that's really very worn out. So, let's put the new one on. So, there's a new one, new old stock. Um, I think you can still get these from Domberg. Um, I think they still have some stocks left. Uh, they're quite expensive, I seem to remember, but uh, not too bad. So that goes on. One thing I will just check. Yeah, there is actually a rubber tire in there as well. So let me just show you that. And that is actually, unfortunately, that is actually quite cracked, I think. No, it's not. It's shiny, but it's not cracked. It's 
it's actually the reflection of the, because there's so much light in here, it's a reflection of the teeth of the gears that make it look cracked. But it is actually fine. So what I'm going to do with that, I will just put a little bit of um, rubber restore on that. <clears throat> uh, I haven't got any hope at all of finding that tyre. Because it's rubber against rubber as well, um, it should be fine. But if I just put some uh, rubber restore on it, um, extend its life a bit, and uh, yeah, we should be good. So I've given it a good old clean. Um, the camera still looks like there's marks and cracks and things on it. It's not at all. It's actually completely good. Um, it's just really odd the amount of light or what light can do. So let's get this idler on. So you've got to just pull this a little bit so it goes on to fits on properly because <clears throat> this is always an intention uh, up against that rubber tire. Then split clip. Now you're supposed to use a new one, but this one is absolutely fine. I've not stre stressed it at all, actually. He says, looking at the gap. Nah, it's fine, actually. And then spring, which is actually difficult to do when you've got slightly shiny fingers, although cleaning and there we go that's now good to go so if I turn the turn the caps down that's turning fine lovely so that's good to go so the next thing is the back tension and uh, what I'll do is uh, get a scalpel so you can find a scal scalpel, uh, doesn't really matter though, so uh, just anything sharp really. And what I'm going to do is just put a mark here. I need to get that as close as I can to the metal set, to the plastic. Uh, I don't use a pen because there's more likelihood of um, there being an error. So I've now marked that. Now what I'm going to do is when I put this back in, the new one back in, um, in fact, let's, let's do it while we talk. Um, I'm just going to slack it off just a tiny bit because uh, these have a nasty habit of being over tight. Something they did through the whole... Um, manufacturer of these decks, these machines. Oh, it's not that one, it's that one. I actually found a few more of these, which is quite nice. These um, plasticized back tension bands. So, uh, yeah, it's quite tough to find those because they, they are much more reliable than the brass style. Um, so, Goes on there, like so, round there, and that, yeah, that is sitting right. So yeah, so I'll put that back in. I'll back it off a bit. So I'll do that. I need two hands for that. So I'll do that. So that's on, and. Uh, Actually, I think I've done that a little bit too loose. I'm just going to tighten it just a tiny bit more. Even though the length's the same. Whoops. Too far. There. I reckon that's about right. Um, yeah, so that should be all okay now. Um, so next thing controller nice and easy sometimes these plastic caps are, are seized but yeah this one's fine so there we go some interesting color and uh this is actually isn't actually too bad um but it has gone a bit bad um it's dried out again 
the rubber seems to dry out. It's probably been in an attic. Um, getting very hot and then very cold and then very hot. But all the caps look good and, you know, everything seems to be just to test fine. So I'm happy with that. I think this is the right um, control. If not, I've got another one. No, it's not. This is actually a later, smaller type. Okay, so I'll, I'll go and find the other one. And uh, that don't save me digging around. I might have one in my box. So, uh, yeah, stand by. So I found one. Um, it's uh, aftermarket uh, replacement, new old stock again, uh, which you can tell um, that it's aftermarket because it hasn't got the nice sort of rounded edges that the OEM ones have. And uh, but this is all brass. It's actually a nice quality um, pinch roller. Well, I suppose we'll find out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's push that back on. These can be incredibly tight, these plastics. This one's actually pretty loose, but, um, you know, it's been loose for countless years, no doubt, and it seems to work all right, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so I think we are ready to get this back together. Um, put these back, to, back on. Front loading system is all good. Uh, great, it's got no belt. Uh, one thing I think is really nice about the design of this is it has a little um, stay, which is absolutely brilliant. It, it's just so well thought out that <laughs> it's a really nice trick. Um, so, I'm all good to go. I have already tested it, to be fair, and um, I had terrible shaky audio on the uh, playback, especially on long play, and even a little bit of um, servo lock uh, issue with um, the capstan, but uh, I actually found out that the, <laughs> the, the supply reel was actually slightly stiff, um, so what I've done is I've greased everything. Um, it's still working its way in and um, sorting itself out. Um, I had jutter, jutter, I had jitter um, on unlace as well. The as they came back, um, the, the they would sort of judder in the the rails in the tracks. So um, clean that off and re-greased it um, with some silicon grease. So it's quite thick stuff. And uh, it's an awful lot better. I mean, it's a lot, lot better. Uh, I did just wonder if there was a problem with the um, pinch roller because these are a bit difficult to test. Um, not at Sony's where you can just sort of flick the, the um, pinch roller and if it runs on, you know, the bearings are good. And this is an aftermarket one as well. Some were good, some were not so good. So I put the old one back on and it was terrible. <laughs> put this one back on, it was a lot better. So I, I think that's that's fine. So let's give it a go. I mean, what it really needs now is lots of use. I mean, it's had, it's run for 10 minutes. Um, so I've got a little bit of jitter. Um, I mean, this tape isn't the best either. This tape has been well and truly, um, pardon the pun, raced and rallied. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, I mean, actually, it's, it's a heck of a lot better again. The more I use this, the better it gets. Um, pardon the flicker, the usual thing with CRTs and cameras. Um, but, uh, yeah, really, really pleased with this. So, it's also looking a lot better display-wise. A lot cleaner. I haven't actually polished it yet, so still see a slight scratch there. But uh, yeah, really pleased with this machine. And um, yeah, so I'll give it a good old run. And uh, yeah, it's it's good to go. It's good to be used. So with that, I will bid you farewell.
Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment as well. Um, any experiences with these machines? I think I've only ever seen one of these previously in my life before, and that was in sort of like, like the, the early 90s. So, um, yeah, really nice to work in it. So, once again, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.